Welcome to MCN and the Triumph Tiger Sport 660. We rode this at the launch at the end of 2021 and absolutely loved it. Loved its uh, handling, its equipment level, how comfortable it was. There was nothing a lot to dislike apart from the fact it's got no cruise control, which is a bit of a an oversight on a bike with such touring capabilities. But what we're gonna do is see if those impressions hold true in England. So I'm gonna take this bike on a little bit of a road trip and uh, do a little video diary. So it's not gonna be the best quality, but hopefully it'll give you an idea of what this bike's like to live with on, on some distance. So I'm gonna go from here, Motorcycle News HQ in Peterborough, gonna ride to the Triumph Visitor Experience, have a little look around there. Um, we're going to do a little lap of Wales, going to go to the bike shed in London, going to go down to Margate, my uh, old hunting ground, and then back again. So uh, really we should be able to ride this bike in lots of conditions to see what it's like comfort wise, you know, see what it's like just drudging down the motorways, how much fun it is in the mountains, what it's like through town, see what the MPGs are like. So let me take you for a quick little walk around the bike. So as we know by now, the Tiger Sport 660 is based on the Trident 660, a bike that's been really popular for Triumph. And as we said before in our video review that we did, um, which you'll be able to find on this channel, um, deservedly so. It is a fantastic bike and this is as well. So the best bits from the launch were its engine, Three cylinder 660 derived from the Street Triple and Daytona. Really nice sound, lots of torque, easy to manage, but quite pokey as well. Pokey is in good performance. Uh, the other things I like about it is its comfort. It's got lots of leg room, comfortable seat, really nice bar position. Got an adjustable screen, although we found that to be quite noisy when we rode it at its launch in Portugal. There's a storm coming on this trip, so uh, we'll see how that fares there. Other things we like, adjustable um, preload, rear preload adjust adjuster. You can do that um, really easily without having to skin your knuckles on the C-spanner. I like these tires, Michelin Road 5s. It's uh, dry and sunny at the moment, but they should come into their own when uh, the, rain, the heavens open and it rains. These Nissan brakes, really, really good, loads of feel don't suffer the numbness that a lot of ABS systems do. You've got shower forks, you've got LED lights, uh, quite a simple dash, but pretty straightforward. Um, nice switch gear, nice simple switch gear. Big tank, we'll see what the MPGs are like. And there it is there. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this trip actually, because the bike should be able to do everything we ask of it. Um, and also the best thing, of course, is the fact that it's not too expensive. It's nearly eight and a half grand, only about 78 quid on PCP. So pretty affordable, really. Lots of nice detail touches. Got the underslung pipe there, banana swing arm. Handles really well. So I'm gonna get my kit on, get going. Almost at the end of day one. Haven't done mega miles today, just about 159.6 to be exact, because I stopped off at the Triumph factory and uh, had a factory tour, which was amazing. And it's nice to be reminded that these bikes aren't just kind of magic together. There's a lot of care and attention and, and technical know-how that goes into these bikes. This Tiger Sport 660 isn't built in Hinkley, but it's designed and developed there, and uh, but it's made in Thailand. The Tiger 900 and 1200 are assembled in Hinkley, and it won't be long before all Triumph's European bikes will be assembled at Hinkley as well. So the people are turning those up about the fact it's uh, made in Thailand, won't be able to do that now, and it doesn't make any difference anyway. 
riding wise the things i've enjoyed most about today are the riding position it's really really comfortable no problems with the seat no problems with the peg position the bars it's been really really windy today but the bike's been stable it's been pretty noisy but i think you're going to get that anyway with the wind um and i've never once thought to myself i want to be on a bigger bike because it's got more than enough power for the motorway riding which is all really we've done today um things i would improve you can get a bluetooth um connection for the dash which would have let me um find where i'm going a bit easier uh, but that's an extra and it's not on this bike um i could have done with a usb charger which isn't on this bike could have done with a quick shifter just makes life a little bit easier um all of these are optional extras so i'll tick all of those if i bought this bike um and it is it's fantastic so um i feel like came on about 145 miles riding really steady it's not too bad um but very very capable So at the end of day two in the magnificent Betsy Coed in the Wales is it's lovely here um, and two things about the Triumph number one been in the saddle for about 10 hours today from Gloucester some nice B roads to the M50 motorway slog to Fishguard up the beautiful west coast of Wales and then through Snowdonia and to here and it is really, really comfortable. One of the things about this bike is, it might not be the most powerful bike in the world, but because it's so light, it doesn't tire you out. So uh, that's one really good thing, and it is genuinely comfortable. It does everything a big tourer can do, but it doesn't tire you out. Number two, today we've really um, been enjoying the handling. So these tires deserve mentioning, Michelin um, Road 5 fantastic in all the conditions feels like you're riding in the dry even when it's wet and this bike handles really really well it's got 17 inch wheels 17 inch front so it handles like a normal bike it's comfortable without being wallowy it's supportive and stable without being too stiff and um, just really really reassuring fantastic brakes really enjoyed the welsh roads wet or dry so it just keeps on impressing Hasn't got an outside temperature gauge. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Not the end of the world, but um, it's cold today. Always be interesting to know how cold it is or how hot it is when you're uh, riding somewhere nice in the summer. So we've covered so far 469 miles. So we get in there. Tomorrow, we're off to the bike shed. So it's the end of day three. We're at the bike shed in London and um, it's been a long old day. We left Betsy Coed, say we, me, um, at eight o'clock this morning and now it's about five o'clock. But we've had to contend with uh, Storm Eunice. Um, pretty easy ride coming um, from the hotel through Wales. It's kind of a bit eerie. The roads are really empty. It was the calm before the storm. It was really quiet. Uh, it wasn't that windy. The Triumph is fantastic through the corners. Just a joy, you didn't know whether to ride them or stop and take pictures. And the grip from those tires, it's just unreal. But then, then the wind started getting up and um, managed to get halfway down the M1, uh, stopped at Tonnington Services because the wind was proper strong. I was doing Mark Marquez, 62 degrees of lean in the straight line. <laughs> so I hold up there for two or three hours, let the worst of it subside and um, managed to get into London. And again, London is eerily quiet. It's Friday afternoon, surreal, apocalyptic. Um, but I'm still on track, a few hours behind the schedule. I'm gonna get myself uh, something to eat in the bike shed. And then um, we're off to Margate. So 
This is day four on the Tiger 660 and yesterday Storm Eunice was uh, a very strange day. I managed to stay out the worst of the storm by stopping for a few hours um, and got to the bike shed and then right down to Thanet. I'm in Margate now and um, it was just like an apocalyptic day. London was really quiet. Um, all the motorways and everything were closed down the M2 on the way to Thanet and uh, right at the end there was a really eerie moon, full moon, really low, really orange. It seemed like the end of the world. But today's another day. So I'm here in my old stomping down in Mar Margate and um, stomping ground in Margate. That's where I grew up. And I've uh, collected a pillion on the way. The five foot six Nina, just to see what this bike's like two up. And uh, I'll report back later. So we're gonna do a bit of sightseeing around Margate. It's not gonna do too many miles today and then uh, tomorrow back to base. So here we are at the end of day five, thousand miles on the Tiger Sport 660, three storms. <laughs> uh, it's been a, an amazing uh, time spent with the new Triumph. Um, last time i spoke to you it was day four and i was in the old stomping ground of margate um took a pillion on the back five foot six and just like it is riding the bike uh she found it really really easy on the back um loads of room for her and for me as well um easy to hang on nice and comfortable so absolutely no problem so you know this really is an all-rounder that you can use one and two up um did a little tour of Thanet, which is uh, Margate, Ramsgate and Broadstairs. And then today we've um, come up the motorway. It should have been a breeze, um, but it was actually a bit more than that because uh, Storm Franklin is just on its way and that was spooling up on the way over. Um, but we got here nice and easy. So let me show you the bike to see how it's fared. Here it is, absolutely hanging, but... Uh works like a dream nothing bad has happened at all and um, the bits that have impressed the most are the comfort all this time spent on the bike the seat's really really comfortable had no problems at all and the uh, foot pegs are nice and low as well so there's lots of leg room but they don't scrape so that's one big thing and pillions are nice and comfortable on the back as well next thing i really like is the engine it's got more than enough power and grunt for anything you need for touring. I'd take this across Europe tomorrow, nice and easy. The brakes are fantastic. I use a lot of back brake as well. The back brake's got a lot of feel. And probably one of the best things about this bike are the tyres, the Michelin Road 5s. Even in the really rubbish weather, you can ride this bike like it's dry, even when it's sopping wet. Everything else is fantastic. The lights, the lights are really good. You've got the, the screen. I've had it on its high position the whole time. Um, it's quite a noisy screen, but to be honest, the wind has been so bad over the last few days that it doesn't matter. It was, it was really windy anyway. It, it wasn't a massive problem. Um, Fuel-wise, on average, the fuel light was coming on at about 150-odd miles, give or take, um, and MPG is about 58 to the gallon. So I reckon you could squeeze out 200 miles out of a tank of this uh, pretty easy. So there you go. What this bike can do really belies its price, its engine size and its power. You can use this bike for absolutely everything. It doesn't do anything wrong. The only thing I'd change is it hasn't got a few creature comforts, but that keeps the price down, doesn't it? So I wish it had had cruise control. It would have made life a lot easier. It would have been interesting to have an outside temperature gauge just so you can see how hot or cold it is. Um, it could have done with a quick shifter, but those things are not the end of the world. I'm about to clean it now, and um, I'm gonna probably wish it had a center stand. But to be honest, you don't really need a, need a center stand on a bike this light, um, and you just ruin the ground clearance anyway. So yeah, this bike does everything. I'm so impressed, and uh, I can't think of a bike I'd rather do a thousand miles in five days and three storms on other than the Triumph.